Hello guys and welcome to a new Snow Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 1 vs 1 on Tali Ihantala and I'm going to be using the 20th Panzer with the Maverick deployment type. Today I'm going to be playing on the red side. On the blue side though we have CK530 who's going to be playing with the 78 Sturm and the Balance deployment type. So this was the first of two games that I was playing in round two of Division 3 of the Steel Division 2 League. I know that's a, a little bit to take in. But yeah, these are my basically second round Steel Division League games. And I ended up with 20th Panzer Maverick against 78 Sturm balanced on Tali and Tala. If anyone's interested in the picks and bands, uh, particularly for the map and the divisions, then make sure to check the description. I'll leave it all in there. But today what we're going to be doing is basically going over this replay. I will be describing what I was trying to achieve and my positives and negatives that came out of it basically. And I'm also going to get to see what CK530 was up to throughout the game and comment on any changes I could have made based on that. So this is more of like a informative learning experience for myself and hopefully for you guys if you plan to play 1v1 and less of like a competitive commentary but I will still be kind of doing that throughout just inherently. So let's have a quick look at the units that I'm going to be getting down. Uh, on the top side here I've got an Alfkladder and a Panzergren. The Alfkladder is going to be sitting in one of these buildings just watching the other side of the lake on the top with a Panzergren there to basically just hold the ground. Uh, then I have a Pack 40 and a Panzergren. The Pack 40 is going to be moving to this corner. The order got a bit messed up at the beginning but I did change that. And then the Panzergren is going to be moving into here. Then we have a double MG AT gun going to be moving up to this position. I've also got some Stoss troop that are going to be securing the forest either side just in case any rushes come through and I've got some Panzergrens that are going to be pushing for this tree line uh, in order to put pressure on this flag early on. Uh, then I have a Panzergren following that up. I've also got a Pack 40 that's going to be moving into here and covering either across this little lake or come down here and cover this bottom side. Then I've got a Stoss troop, two Stoss troop, a Sturmpio and a Panzergren that are going to be heading into this tree line with the Avcladder that's moving into cover here to give me recon down the road. It doesn't really have line of sight down the road but at least allows me to see if anything comes into the side. And then I've got Panzergren heading to the bottom side to hold ground there. I've got a bun bunch of Panzer 3s back here, one N, one, uh, two L variants and a Gila following me up in the middle. Managed to get a nice snipe at the start. But it turns into MG wars across the towns because the MG42s on the side of CK530 open up on my AT gun and then I start firing at his MG42s. In this case, I'm actually at an advantage because my MGs are upvetted. Uh, so I have mine at one vet with a Panzergrenfjord behind. He has his at no vet with a Pioneerfjord behind. So I have the vet advantage. So technically I should win. And what I decided to do was basically purposefully right click this MG42 on the left. So I pin that down first so that I end up as a 2v1 basically. But for some reason they did keep shooting at the other MG42 regardless. So I'm not really sure that micro worked out as I intended. Uh, CK did unload a pack 40 down the road which did start to fire at my Panzer 3s here. Didn't really notice this until a little bit later on. But fortunately, attack moving them into the cover did give me, uh, well, got me out of line of sight. Early on, bit of a mistake on my part. I let these two flags go because I didn't place anything here. This was actually a pretty big mistake uh, for me because this would have meant that I was a 13-11 at this point rather than a, actually no it would have been 12 to 12 but basically I wouldn't be, have been bleeding tickets and it would have been more advantageous if I end up taking a flag from him uh, anyway MD42s I'm going to be winning that engagement Grillo is going to be popping those with the HE shells here but he's going to be bringing up a Nashorn to engage that now, I didn't really get much of a chance to talk about my objectives here, but basically because I'm playing Maverick against Balanced, it means that I need to win by about the 25-30 minute mark or the game is pretty much over uh, because he's just going to have so many more troops, much more income than me in the late game. So that I'm kind of on a bit of a time limit here. My objectives that I gave myself was to capture this bottom flag, the flag in the open here, and the flag in this town. Those were the three that I was going to go for and sit on for the 15 to 9 which I require to get a double tick which is 
almost entirely necessary in order to win as a Maverick player. You, you need to get the double tick at, at least at some point in the game. If you don't get a double tick and you just sit on a one tick, uh, then you kind of end up in this weird spot where you just eventually get overrun. If you don't get eventually overrun, then the balanced player is probably doing something wrong. Anyway, still losing out here 14 to 10, but I haven't captured any offensive flags, so technically it doesn't matter that much. Uh, if I capture an offensive flag and I still haven't captured back these, then there's, there's a problem because it would have basically been counting against my potential tickets taken from the enemy. Anyway, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, when I'm talking about a one tick or a double tick what I mean is at the moment for example my tickets are going down because he's ahead in flags and currently it's a single tick and you can see that by this little arrow here when you get to 15 to 9 it goes to two arrows and that basically actually I don't think it does but either way if it went to 15 to 9 this timer which now says 30 to 30 35 I am gonna lose in half an hour would change to 15 minutes so I would be losing tickets doubly as fast on a two, on a two tick as opposed to a one tick. Uh, and then a triple tick is, you know, three times as fast, etc. So the idea as a Maverick player is you want to find that double tick so you can get the, the tickets down fast enough that they can't sit in the game for 30 minutes and amass more troops than you. Because technically, if I was to sit on a one tick at this point, I would need 33 minutes in order to win. And what did I say already? I need... Uh, like I need to win within 25 to 30 minutes so at what at some point in the game I'm gonna need a double tick anyway um, Stug's here do manage to pick off one of my Panzer threes I am aggressively pushing these down because they were sat here getting picked off so I drove them forwards to attack the Schutzen and then because they started getting shoot, shot at I moved them down ideally I should get them back into cover which is exactly what I'm going to be doing with the Panzer 3 here and uh, this one's also now moving back. I have managed to secure this objective and now I'm going to be looking to secure this one so I was kind of methodically working my way through each objective. I was also having to micro a lot with the Griller here in order to uh, mess things up. I also had my MG42 firing at some infantry here at one point so there was a lot going on and now I've got my Stoss Troop and my Sturm Pioneers across here. I was actually pretty lucky to get across here with all of this close range infantry, but this was a perfect uh, engagement for me because I've got double Stoss Troop and Sturm Pioneer against Sturm Schutzen, so I'm going to easy take them out. Unfortunately, the Pack 40 does finish off one of my Stoss Troop, which is not that good for me because it meant that I didn't have an extra Molotov that I could have used. But. Ultimately, having a full squad of Stampires, having a full squad of Stoss Troop, still going to be enough to clean out these units, as long as I don't mess it up. Uh, MG42 here, I did bring in an unload early. Uh, that's going to be helping pin down the Schutzen on the other side of the river, but was being shot at by this Nazwan. I had to be really careful of line of sight in this game, because the 70H Sturm has great range project projection with Naz horns, with AT guns, also have the IG-33s here as you can see, so they have a lot to work with in that regard. Anyway, speaking of mistakes, the Sturm Pioneer here gets away with dropping a grenade on my Stoss troop, and then I didn't engage at the same time basically with the Sturm Pioneer, so actually he's going to get away, which is kind of bad for me because he can now use that Pioneer Fjord further back to give venerancy to any AT guns he wants along here. If he puts it on the edge of the tree line, he could buff his Stugs. I should have killed that because then he wouldn't ha have had a leader here on the bottom side for the time being. Uh, meanwhile, CK is going to be fire positioning the edge of this town. My two MGs already dead, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and now I'm basically doing the same with my Griller. So this Griller has line of sight just on the edge of the of the river here, or the lake, sorry. So if I land any shots further to the left, that's going to be beneficial to me. This is actually going to force him to attack me preemptively and pulls his infantry out of heavy cover into light cover so my Panzergrens can pin them down really quickly. And then this Griller is firing across here because I saw the Pack 40 there previously and it's also forced back the Schutzen. So just microing those to make sure that I can basically push here. And I saw the, saw the two Sturm Schutzen coming out. So now I'm just trying to secure that with this Panzergren, and I'm using this one to just hit them in the open, hopefully slightly out of line of sight of the IG, but he's going to be able to see that briefly and get a shot on target. 
And this Panzergren now moving up on the bottom side. Pack 40 was hitting that the whole time. Going to be briefly seeing a Flammenwerfer, so going to let the next shot fall. You can see I've adjusted the positioning, so it pins down the Flammenwerfer. Also, BF109, nice cheeky bomb onto the Pack 40, gets the job done. So I've secured this little tree line here but as you can see I've dropped this flag and again these flags in the open here I shouldn't be losing these at any point really and like this MG should have been something else there at the beginning I should have probably had something in here that was putting influence on this flag because yeah it's it's basically tickets that I otherwise would have had throughout the game uh, Panzergrenz going to get pinned down with the double stug. These stugs again have the two-star veterancy because of the pioneer fitter, so my mistake for not killing that. Um, but the Gila here does help secure against the Urzatz Truppen in the town. Uh, one of them just got deleted, the other one's now getting deleted by the Gila as I move the Panzergrenz back up there. And I have managed to now brief briefly uh, capture this flag, but my Panzergrenz here are not going to be able to sit in that position for too long. Uh, but now with 14 to 10, I'm going to be looking for 15 to 9. Uh, now, my main advantage comes in phase B when my income is going up to 170 when his is on 130. It's the equivalent of getting like an extra infantry or two every tick. So it does give you quite a nice advantage. Recon plane hit. These only cost 25 points. Just had it hanging about trying to give me information. He brought up a flank 43 to shot that, shoot that down. But anyway, going back to what I was saying about Maverick, um, the idea is that in phase B, that's when you start building up points and that's when you should build an advantage. All of the, the trading that I've done so far is purely based off like almost the same income. So I'm trading relatively well infantry wise, not so well with my armor. But my pack 40 here, going to be finding shots onto the Stug 3. Fortunately, his pack 40 runs out of HE ammo, so I was happy about that. And that is going to allow me to get at least one more shot in here as my Marders move forwards. So I managed to kill one of the Stugs. Marders are going to kill the second Stug. And these are really good engagements. Like these Marder 2s, or sorry, Marder 1s, are only 50 points. And each of his Stugs are like 80 points. So... It's really good value for me to kill his Stugs with Marders, and they're really good at doing so. So that's why I was using them in this case. Pack 40, though, does have AP and is going to be able to see my Marder. So he's going to be firing that. I should have probably tried to move my Marder over here after this one landed that shot. Because then I could get the kill, but this Marder 1, absolute chad, gets the job done. Now... CK 530s bringing over his Nashorn and I'm going to be hitting that initially with APCR here. Now you might be wondering why I'm using APCR but the main reason is accuracy. Like turning it off at this range does kind of mean that I lose accuracy and Nashorns by default have quite high accuracy. Well they, I guess they have the same accuracy as Marta but the point is I want to be able to hit those shots and APCRs can cause crits. I only need to land three shots to kill a Nashorn, and since it's 2v1, makes sense. If it was a 1v1, probably would have been better to just have the AP duel and hope for the best, but either way, another recon plane coming in. This one I'm hanging a little bit further back. Unfortunately, still got into range of the 37mm uh, in this case, uh, but now we are in phase B. So, Verframen has been brought in, and I'm going to be using that to try and soften this town because as I mentioned at the start my targets are this flag this flag and this flag no other flag is really that feasible to take this one maybe uh, but that really depends on you kind of rushing it at the start because pushing through this tree line is actually kind of difficult and I've also got to bear in mind that my infantry is actually generally worse at close range uh, throughout the game because he's going to have lots of Sturmschützen and those plus Federacy can really really slice and dice sort of Panzergrenz I guess at close range. I do of course have Sostrup and Sturmpios but those were mostly in phase A. Uh, so yeah Panzergrenz there. If I had maybe had smoke I could have maybe smoked the road and then gone for like a Sostrup Sturmpio play at the beginning but you can see that CK was actually trying to prepare for that with the triple Flammerwerfer there so he was, he was basically hoping that 
I would go for that and then he would counter it with his close range infantry. My mortar firing away, or sorry, not mortar, my <laughs> 280 mil Verflamen. I placed three shots here and then I placed another three shots here. So with these Verflamens what you can do is you can split the the amount of shots that they fire. So they fire six in one go, but if you fire three then cancel it. You can fire the three, the second three like almost immediately uh, afterwards without having to wait the whole reload time. So that's basically what I was doing there and that allowed me to pin down a lot of these troops in the town whilst I move my Panzergrenz across the open here. IG though has other ideas. Gonna be absolutely blasting that Panzergrenz in the open direct hit. Really not good. Meanwhile up here, pack 40 engagement Pack 40 versus pack 40, so just going to come and bomb that quick. Get rid of that. Unfortunately, not going to get the kill this time around. And meanwhile, on the bottom, he's been breaking down my infantry here, so the Sturmschutzen gets in close and kills off my Panzergren after I lost both of my close range infantry in here. So, Panzergrens now have a pretty good foothold here, uh, wiping out Schutz in the open. I'm still holding that flag quite well, but as you can see, CK530 can fire position into here with his IG so holding that position against the IG at range is very difficult anyway we're going to be getting another Verflammen in another three rockets get fired again splitting how I use these because ultimately I just want to either pin this down or kill it if I can in this case pretty successful rockets does hit the Sturmschützen pretty hard now I've got this Panzer IV engagement against the Stugs, but that's Stug and Nashorn against Panzer IV, so going to be losing that inevitably. Panzer IVs I probably shouldn't have brought in throughout the entire game. Oh, also, JU-88, JU-188, sorry, comes in. Look at my BF-109, gloriously killing that for the cause. They go down together, the Flak-43 takes it out. And that's a big kill for me because... He's going to have two of those available in the game. And they have these 1,000 kilogram bombs that are kind of scary. Uh, going to be losing one of my Panzergrens there, I think, before it unloaded. Pack 43 back here getting the shot off. Down here, we're going to be having Stug engage us. The normal AP shell is really not going to be up to snuff. So I was hoping that I could just APCR crit the Stug 3 here, but it didn't really work out the way I intended. But I'm going to get back in this position. The Sturmschützen was forced to fall back and got killed. And now my Panzergren is going to be moving up to re-secure that. So I'm 14 to 10 again. Like I still have an advantage. But, you know, it's Maverick. So I've got, I'm still on that time limit. And it's kind of nagging at me at this point. Because I really, really need to get this point, And it's really difficult to take. And ultimately at this point, it's when I realized that on Tali Ihantala you don't take Maverick and it's something that Attack Power said to me afterwards <laughs> when I told him the results of this game I was like yeah I kind of realized that <laughs> but basically Bear Flamen's firing away and I'm just kind of hoping that I can hold on at this point in order to get a double tick because it's still very much uh, I guess not easy but it's very much possible for me to win this game still if I do get a double tick at this point and do manage to chunk his tickets quite a bit all I'd need to do then afterwards is basically hold on for less time and that would be okay anyway we're going to be dropping my Verflammen on here really unfortunate that I didn't kill that with the four rockets that I fired uh, I also ended up Verflammening the town again which is allowing my Sloss Troop and Panzergrenz to move up so these Verflammens are definitely making me ground but throughout CK is still putting pressure elsewhere on the map. I uh, should have had this back 40 unloaded. That was a, a bit of a mistake on my part. I need to keep that road covered at all times. But CK is going to be coming in with his off map now and hitting this area. His IG is currently got line of sight on Panzergren, so I should have moved that back sooner. It's actually going to get my other Panzergren here hit by that and both of them go down so that was a, a mistake on my part I should really be watching out for line of sight there throughout the game anyway got my Grilla that's going to be going for the shot onto the IG-33 and we're going to be able to kill that which is really good pack 40 finally unloaded here going to be taking on the Nashorn 
And I've also, in the meantime, managed to get double Sturm Pioneer Panzergren into this tree line. Now this tree line is actually better for me to control than this one. Because this one I can I can sit in there, but he can always like use an IG on it. Whereas this one's a little bit deeper and longer, so if I manage to control this tree line, then it makes controlling this flag a lot easier. Uh, meanwhile, I have been uh, sitting here with Aguila, waiting to help support my Panzergrens. Got a double Panzer IV moving up to help here, and this Panzergrens uh, moving into position as well. Now have supply re resupply my Verflammens, uh, since this one is more or less used up. And this one's just waiting on a reload. So pack 43 does end up getting sprayed by the Panzergrens. Did land one shot, I believe, onto the Grilo, but didn't kill it. I think that's damaged. Oh, no, it's not. I think it just landed next to it. Anyway, uh, with the pack 43 there, what ended up happening, I used the light cover. I just reversed slightly. And what that would have done if he wanted to kill it is like have to move forward. So I'm just firing positioning that to make sure that he can't. I'm using the back garden here to engage the Schutzen. And we're just going to let that Gulo fire for the time being. Yeah, I noticed that that shot the Stoke and uh, just going to back that up a little bit. Now I've got BF109s coming in. The reason I've got so many coming in at the same time, so I've got BF109 going for the bombing strike onto the Schutzen. We've got this one that was actually targeted on the Flak 37. And then I've got double JU87s that's now coming in for the Stoke because I don't really have any other options. Uh, one of my Panzergrens does like YOLO in the open, which was kind of bad on my part. But the JU87 is going to be doing the job here on the Stug, which means I don't really have to rely on the the uh, Panzer IVs to do that. But the Panzer Strike is going to move up here and take it out. I killed that Panzer Strike, so I assumed he only had one. I assumed wrong, because this Panzer Strike is now going to be moving up as Hearth moves back. Uh, the other thing that was kind of annoying about that engagement, obviously I lost the JU-87 there, which is fine because I didn't destroy any of the AA. But that was because my Panzer IV failed to land the last shot on the Flak 43, otherwise this probably would have been dead and all of my aircraft would have been fine. Anyway, second Panzer Strike is going to get the better of me and down it goes. And we're back to 12-12, to -12. not a good place for a Maverick player to be. Grilla going to be engaging the Pack 40 further up and on this bottom side I had kind of dismantled the Stug and the uh, Nas Horn that had pushed forwards but there's still a lot of infantry that's going to be keeping me at range. These Schutzen squads are really nasty uh, but thankfully like my Panzergrens were all upvetted uh, due to the Panzergrenfuhrer here so I'm able to win these engagements against the Schutzen. Like, when you're doing double MG versus double MG having an extra vet is really important because you take less suppression you take less damage because you have that extra veterancy whilst also being more accurate with the MG so technically you do do more damage as well but the Grilla here really really doing a great job now now that there's no Stug to kill it I can just allow it to open up I'm also going to get a beautiful free kill there onto the Schutzen in the transport but what has happened in the meantime is the Stern Pioneers have pushed through here and cleaned up most of my infantry and going to kill off that Panzergren as well so there's back and forth going on constantly and we're now into phase C. So I now have probably about five minutes, I think it's five, six minutes left until the income disparity comes back together and then goes completely in his favor. So at 25 minutes or 26 minutes, that's when the balance player will have made as much income as I've made uh, at that point. So... Yeah, any minute after 25 minutes, that's when things start to get nasty with reinforcements. And since I'm only at 12 to 12, well, we've seen this before in the Still Division League many times when casting. And yeah, I was just really, really sad that I hadn't chosen balanced because I feel like with balanced, at this moment in time, I would be in the driving seat big time with the double verf flamming up trading pretty well onto a lot of this armor you can see another Stug going down there I would have had the time to win the game obviously I might not have been as at uh, as at much of advantage because I wouldn't have had the Maverick income but I think in general I was I was trading and playing relatively well so the pioneers going to be doing okay in the open. These Pioneer SVTs are actually really good. If you give them Valorancy at mid-range, they're really strong. They basically become like Sapodi. 
a nice first diamond strike going to be coming down here. Probably shouldn't have cancelled that one <laughs> looking at the replay here. I didn't know how much was in here when I did this, obviously. I knew that there was a few infantry units in there, but not that much. But if I'd gone all out with the six Verflammen shot onto that town, it would have been deadly. Okay, Panzer three on the bottom side, going to get taken out by the pack 40 here. Panzergrens are getting mopped up by the Schutzen at range. And here we go with another airstrike. So, bringing them all in at the same time. Mainly so that this AA can't basically pin it all at the same time. A nice bombing strike there is going to finish off the Sturmschützen. I'm going to be able to surrender the Ersatz. And I've got the 14 to 10. I don't have the bottom flag, otherwise it would have been at this point 15 to 9. Uh, the J87s I preemptively evac because the first one got pinned down really fast. And that kind of sucked. Anyway, in a good position here. Excuse me. Uh, in a good position here with the Pioneer to just hold the town and if I can get all my pioneers in there it's actually going to make it really difficult for his ranged units to get back in. Uh, Grealers still popping the Schutzen in the open but meanwhile on the bottom side CK does have the infantry advantage here. Now I was thinking maybe like throughout the game I could have used my Verflammens to pop like the IG back here that probably would have been a good idea. This one not dying and only going down to one health did cost me an extra unit as well. But here comes the bomber the Ju-188, this is the second of two of these that he has because obviously we shot down the first with the VF-109 that sacrificed itself and that's going to be bombing my pack 40 here. I don't have any AA, that's mainly because the 70H Sturm really doesn't have that much in the way of like good aircraft, so generally you don't see them use it too much. Uh, and one AA piece on this bottom side isn't going to stop a Ju-188 from bombing. So I would need to invest in two, and that's not really something that I could have done throughout this game uh, with the amount of trading that was going on, especially early on. Anyway, Pack 40 going to be engaging the Stug 3 here, and that is going to get away from the second one, but we managed to kill the first, which was nice. I do manage to get another group of close range infantry in here, which is going to allow me to secure this flag. Now, all I need to do is secure the bottom flag again. Uh, but yeah, TK, really good job of kind of like blunting my pushes all the time. And Tali Ihantala is a map that I learned is kind of difficult to get a 15 to 9 on. <laughs> like, it really is. Because uh, there's so much like open ground uh, that you have to basically capture. So like this is like right on the open. Uh, this flag is actually like really difficult to get into. It was only because of my Verflammens that I could move in there. And this bottom side again, there's so, so many angles on all of these. It's much easier to, to actually hold. Um, but now, yeah, I've run out of close range infantry. The Pioneer SVTs were my la the last of my close range infantry. And I was using them to take that town. So now I'm down to Panzergrenz and that is it. Like, I only have one card of Panzer Grand in Phase C because it's Maverick deck. So I'm just going to be relying on them. And I'm just considering basically whether or not I can hold uh, the 13 to 11 for a bit longer. Uh, or at least at enough time that I can win. Uh, double BF-109 does come down here and gets the double kill onto the Schutzen. So that was actually a really nice strike. I'm also going to be Verflamming the far side of this tree line because I thought you had put more there because I saw the shoots and coming down the road but they hadn't actually moved up yet uh, so that was a bit of a waste that was probably the one Verfram and strike that really didn't hit the mark but I do kill the Urzats because they get forced to fall back and the Gila kills it and then the double Panzergram plus the pack 40 is actually going to pin down the shoots in here so that wasn't too bad Stoke 3 however does come up to the town and I don't really have any armor at close range that's going to be able to deal with that like I if I hadn't have lost my Panzer IV so carelessly, that would have been the time that those Panzer IVs would have been helpful in order to like kill off a Stug in this position. Uh, but alas, the, the Panzer IVs are already dead because of the double Panzer Shrek, so that was unfortunate. Um, CK is going to be bringing up some more troops here. He's brought up a double MG with the Pioneer. I think his intention was to maybe try and get some cheeky flags here, either in the open or like secure this tree line. But here goes my Verflammen. It actually does really well. It kills the Stug and kills the Schutzen back here without hitting my own unit. So, yeah, thumbs up Verflammen. 
doing a big, uh, big, big help on that bottom side. J87 didn't have any targets. I couldn't really get close to anything, and I had it sitting around, so I just clustered the Schutzen to pin it down so that my Panzergrenz could actually move up. And I'm going to be bringing in another J87 that's going to be looking to basically pin the units that I'm up against with the Panzergrenz here. This is almost exactly the same as if you were to like mortar it. Um, in this case, my J87 is a little off target because the Schutzen already ran up. And you can just see how quickly the Schutzen just kill those Panzergrenz at close range. And this was the problem that I was having. Now, it also kind of explains why I picked Maverick in the first place because looking at the matchup between the 20th Panzer and the 78 Sturm I was like I should go Maverick because the 78 Sturm has way more infantry slots and in a long game will eventually win however I didn't consider the map and I think if I'd considered the map as well then I would have picked balanced and the game at this point would have been okay because I'm in a huge uh, lead in terms of points and I probably would have been able to sit on a 13 to 11 because I wouldn't have been aggressively pushing into towns that were costing me so much so much in resources. I would have been able to you know secure this quite well like I did and then just kind of like play the long game and just sit on this flag and I would have probably won. Uh, because this is an offensive flag, this is an offensive flag. Uh, this one cost me loads of units, like it cost me the double Panzer IV, it cost me the Pioneers, anything that I pushed in there before, like the Sauce Troop and the Panzergran. Um, down here, I lost all the Panzer threes, you know, and I wouldn't have had to push that aggressively if I wasn't playing Maverick. So I think in balanced, I would have been a lot more chill. I would have been able to sit on this flag and just kind of whittle down CK over time because my Grela were on point. I think my Micro on these Grela was really on point and you can see that by the fact that they ran out of ammo. Uh, the Verflammens were hitting the mark really nicely. Um, in this case, what I'm going to be doing with 280 mil is uh, actually bomb, or sorry, not bomb, um, rocket the Flak 43 because I've noticed throughout that he's only got one in the center. So if I get rid of it, I can use my air force to try and hold for the rest of the game because we're actually up to 30 minutes like almost 31 minutes and there's 13 minutes currently until i win you know it still hasn't got to the point where he's uh, cancelled out my advantage so i'm perfectly happy that anyway ju188 is going to come in and uh, bomb my stosh troop here that's not going to be fun for them it does kill them off my verflamen drops the rockets onto the Sturmschutz and the Panzerstreck at the right time. That actually was really nice. Uh, BF-109 going to come over and attack the JU-188, but I'm going to be forced off uh, by the Flak-43 on the bottom side. But it confirmed also that I had killed the Flak-43 here. So now the BF-109 is coming in for the free bombing strikes onto the enemy infantry. Uh, on the bottom, meanwhile, the double Schutzen are pushing onto my Panzergren. I didn't really see this. Like, it's really not something that you're focused on, especially with, like, so this is my perspective when I'm playing the game. And you can see that this right side is always covered by the minimap. You never, ever see this Panzergren. Um, so, yeah, ideally, I should have been falling that back before it lost too many units because then I can stand up against the double Schutzen. Uh, but, yeah, Verflammen coming in there for the kill onto the pack 40. The rockets weren't quite on target for that one, but yeah, I didn't really have any more to give because I wanted to basically put two rockets on this one and two rockets on this one and hope for the best. I mean, sometimes uh, you you can hit in one rocket, sometimes it requires all six. Okay, pack 40 gets a one-shot bailout on the Stug, so I'm happy about that. I've also managed to uh, you know, get these bombing strikes off and stuff. So things are actually looking pretty good for me still. Uh, there's 11 minutes left till I win at this point as well. Uh, even if he takes an advantage, which he just has with the 13 to 11, there's what, like 17 and a half minutes left until I um, win anyway by default. But one thing that really does kind of break my back is he kills one of the Verflammens. The Stug rushes up the road here. He manages to find line of sight and Verflammen down. Uh, Panzergrens are kind of scrambling to get into position as the one on the bottom does get killed off by the double Schutzen. And J87 going to be coming in here for the Stug. 
I'm hoping that I can take that out. But in the middle, Panzergren's just holding at range. Uh, but this Pioneer does make it difficult for me to try and contest the middle flag. And one thing that was really bad here is my JU-87, even though it was barely pinned, or not, like, not even pinned at all really, it failed to kill the Stug, so that was not great at all. Like, it's very rare that that happens. I guess I'm not maybe familiar with Axis versus Axis and how much damage that should be doing, but generally I'd expect the Stug there to die. Now, since there are there is no AA in the middle, check this out. It's the biplane squad. Oh yeah. So these recon planes, they do have these napalm bombs. And what that means is I can use that to attack the infantry. And since there's quite a lot of infantry out in the open right now, I thought I might get in a little bit of damage there. My BF-109 is also just strafing these as much as he wants. Because again, no AA. Uh, so, yeah, Panzergren there. Going to be trying its best to hold against the Pioneers. Uh, my BF-109s were coming in for the bottom side. I needed to kill these Schutzen because uh, CK-530 put his Stugs here, which was really good because it stopped my, me getting infantry across. But ultimately, going to get the second bombing strike off. Um, the reason that this didn't bomb initially was because I was waiting for line of sight, uh, basically visual confirmation, so I could right-click the unit itself. And then what that allows the plane to do is kind of predict where the unit's going to be and therefore get the kill. Uh, whereas if I'd fire positioned it and he'd moved the Schutzen, it would have missed. So I basically waited until I could see them so that I could get those shots off. Now going for the Verflammen shots again. Going to be trying to hit these units that are advancing towards my poor Panzergenfuhrer. What's doing a runner. Nice kill onto the Pioneer there. And also did a good chunk to the damage of damage to the infantry behind. But yeah, we're 35 minutes into the game now. He's been getting 155 points while I've been getting 80. 75 points more per minute for the last 15 minutes. So he has a lot more stuff than I do. <laughs> and the fact that I've been trading so well for so long was a bit of a miracle. Now it's kind of getting the better of me. And I'm starting to realize that you know, maybe... I can't really pull this off anymore. Uh, at, at one point, it looked kind of, I guess, feasible. But then when he gets the double tick, you know, it's, it's basically over. Uh, because he's going to be able to finish or at least drain my tickets more than his in that time period. So, yeah, unless I could get back a 14 to 10 and hold a 14 to 10... There was no way of me winning, even though technically I would win by default in 14 minutes. So there was all that kind of math going on in my head. And basically I realized that, yeah, it's 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 more or less over. But I've got the Geos coming in again for one last sortie. My glorious Napalm Recon planes, like us, would be proud. But the AA is now back up. In the middle, as you can see, there's two fresh Flak 43s. And my poor Geo babies are going to be taking a lot of damage. Oh, look at them. They managed to get away. <laughs> but with that, it's pretty much done. Pack 40, going to take a cheeky kill onto the Stig. Just trying to redeem a little bit of honor towards the end here. Judson moving into position. I mean, it's still a 14 to 10, right? So I'm still looking at the clock and going, if I can hold 14 to 10 for a little bit longer, then it's going to require him to get a triple tick to beat me and, and kind of all this kind of stuff. But ju 188 is going to come in there, take a free pack 40 kill. BF-109 is going to bomb the Shudson, stop them pushing on this flag. Uh, ju 188 was looking for the Stug here. And did find it. But I am still killing plenty of armor. It's just the infantry has got too overwhelming. Which is something that you are likely to expect with the 78 Sturm. They are a pretty deep division. Now it's triple shits on the bottom side against my one lone Panzergren that's sitting here. <laughs> and yeah, so basically that's it. We are done. 
Uh, I tap out in just a moment. But uh, it was close. I would say it was close. If this wasn't Tali Ihantala, then it would have been a very different story. But, of course, he picked the 17-inch turn because it was Tali Ihantala. Uh, he played the range game really well and stopped me from ever getting 15 to 9. Um, there was, like, one moment, I think, that I had 15 to 9, but it really wasn't that long and not long enough to win. So after 38 minutes and 27 seconds, I'm going to be losing again. And that is my record, 0 to 3 <laughs> in the Steel Division 2 League. Yeah. I think there are a few factors as to like why this happened. I think the main one is picking the wrong deployment type. I think if I was balanced in this game, the 20th, the 20th Panzer would have done really well. And like I could have leveraged the uh, Verframmens to play the long game because you know, ultimately I was trading very, very well with those after they came in. It's just, yeah, it's just a real, a real tough one. Um, like when I realized like mid game, like that I'd shot myself in the foot with this map, it was really sad. And I think it, it comes down to the fact that I'm not very experienced on these 1v1 maps at all. I don't know the positioning of the flags on the maps and w whether or not that determines whether or not you play like maverick or balanced or what division you play even i mean the division is not so hard for me to figure out but the deployment type and how that changes is exactly like a completely new thing that i didn't even think about before going into this game so lesson learned i suppose uh to consider the map and consider the enemy's division in order to determine my deployment type the other thing is i was still super tired like I'm up recording this just after playing this um, because I was go I'm going away like this is coming out whilst I'm not even at home so <laughs> hello from my holiday <laughs> and hopefully I'll be de-stressing and, and chilling out but yeah at the time of recording it, it's it's busy um, and that obviously doesn't help as well but I'm not gonna make too many excuses CK530 played well he played to his strengths he played the ranged game with the nurse horns with the igs and uh just kept me off those objectives all at once so i'm uh, not all at once but like at least one of them so that i couldn't get 15 to 9 uh yeah hopefully i'll do better in the next one because of course it is a best of two and we'll see how i get on that is it hopefully you guys have enjoyed that thank you very much for watching thank you to ck530 for playing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.